Christmas should be about fulfilling the dreams of children and helping the poor, Thompson writes, photo, Daniel Mears slash the Detroit News, by photo. The Christmas season is fraught with beautiful traditions that require money and time. Think about it. The buying of gifts in this peak selling season for retailers, for friends and families and the holiday parties and dinners accompanied by wonderful decorations that speak to the spirit of the season are all geared toward making Christmas a festive and happy period. However, what is often missing is the focus on uplifting the lives of those around us and, in the larger community, of those who can't afford to celebrate because of the dire socio-economic conditions they face. The state of their economic lives provides no measure of hope for them during this season. To them and their children, Christmas is just one more day in a continuing tale of daily survival. Some of these parents have to be bearers of bad news by telling their children that they can't afford to buy much anticipated gifts. The children have no recourse but to accept the reality that financial worries are standing in the way of their happiness. For these families, it is also hard to find positive meaning, for instance, in God rest ye merry gentlemen. Let nothing you dismay, one of the oldest Christmas carols, because their lives are just the opposite of the theme conveyed in the song. But the irony is that the essence of the Christmas story, which is centered around the birth of Jesus, who was born poor, shows that those who are poor shouldn't feel sad during this season because Christmas, too, is about them. They should not feel disenfranchised. One reason is because God wanted to show us that Jesus Christ came to bring salvation to everyone not just the rich and powerful, but the poor and downtrodden. God's love extends to the whole human race, evangelist Billy Graham explains in a 2012 Q&A interview about the meaning of Christmas. In addition, because he was born into a poor family, we know that Jesus understands what it means to be poor as almost everyone was then, and still is in most parts of the world. The theologian James H. Cohn, in his book God of the Oppressed, added, The Jesus story is the poor person's story, because God in Christ becomes poor and weak in order that the oppressed might become liberated from poverty and powerlessness. The oppressed are freed for struggle, for battle in the pursuit of humanity. And based on the biblical account and the writings of Titus Flavius Josephus, born Yosef ben Matitiahu, the Jewish scholar and historian, if Jesus were to host a Christmas party in Detroit, he would not exclusively invite the mayor, city council president and those who call the shots in the city. Instead, the son of Mary would include and even prioritize the homeless and forgotten, the abandoned and the working poor, prisoners and those left out of the city's recovery. He would make a big deal out of the fact that there are children in Detroit who stand to lose health coverage next month if Congress fails to renew funding for the Children's Health Insurance Program. That is part of the significance of Christmas, remembering and reaching out to the marginalized.